is something called the clipper chip, where uh, you, you would be able to encrypt your data, but you would have to give your encryption key over to the government, who would then share it with NSA or the FBI if they had it. They said if they had a court order that that we didn't believe that that was the mechanism they were going to use. And uh, this is Comey is just like Louis Free was back in those battles in the 90s. They want. They do not want encryption used by private citizens or businesses because they want to have real-time access to encrypted communications without going through any steps. But you're right. NSA, given enough time, they're building this huge supercomputer at Oak Ridge, Tennessee, by the way, that will be able to decrypt anything within probably seconds. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if they want it, they're going to get it. But the people that are penalized, as you suggest, not that I, you know, I'm, I'm interested in the bottom line of Google or, um, or, or Apple, but it does hurt their foreign sales when there are these, uh, restrictions placed on encryption and also their domestic sales for people that are worried about their, uh, their uh, private data. Uh, being compromised. And uh, I had to laugh. I was recently uh, looking at, at, at some ads inside the DC Metro, and they were advertising government clouds. Like that's some sort of security for these government agencies. It was AT&T actually that was advertising it. I, I can't think of anything more ludicrous than the government putting its sensitive data in a cloud. I can't believe anybody would put their sensitive data in a cloud. Thanks for the call. Also, Wayne, there was a comment by Google's Eric Schmidt a couple of days ago. He gave a speech saying that basically NSA surveillance threatens to break the Internet. Now, this was the same guy who said, if you have something that you don't want anyone to know, maybe you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. I mean, is it a sign that the NSA surveillance has so destabilized the very structure of the Internet that even people like Eric Schmidt are now paranoid that it could break the entire uh, World Wide Web? Well, perhaps maybe Eric Schmidt should have uh, discussed this with Keith Alexander at the several Bilderberg meetings they attended together. Maybe he should have uh, expressed his concerns then before this got out of hand. But, yeah, it, it's typical. These CEOs from uh, the, the Silicon Valley companies and, 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 you know, and all these other high-tech companies, uh, at first they defend, um, uh, you know, NSA, or at least they don't say anything critical of them, and then they find out, oh, my God, it's worse than I thought. But, you know, I mean, yeah, he had, he had more than enough opportunity to make these concerns known personally to Alexander, and I'm sure he will in the future when uh, Alexander's replacement, Admiral Mike Rogers, attends these same, same conclaves. It seems like Bilderberg loves to have the, the NSA director at, at all their meetings these days. So let Schmidt and the other... Uh, these other high-tech gurus uh, complain to them in person at the next one. JJ in Texas, you're on the air with Wayne Madsen. Go ahead, JJ. Hey, Mr. Madsen. Good to talk to you today. How's it going over there? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. I have a comment about 9-11 since that came up. Um, isn't it strange uh, that our government flew out the family of the wanted hijacker behind 9-11, Osama bin Laden, and all his family got to fly out? Isn't that a false flag there, number one? And number two, uh, isn't it true that Pakistan's intelligence is called ISI? Yes. You know, is there any correlation between ISIS and Pakistan? Uh, that's not determined, except uh, one thing I, I, I discovered in Iran, that uh, we, we now know that ISIL is crossing over the Iraqi border into Iran using some uh, kind of open smuggling routes uh, in the Kurdish area uh, in the northern part of Iran, uh, where, where uh, a lot of stuff that's basically illegal in Iran is smuggled by mostly Armenian businessmen, things like beer, for example, and that ISIL's using these same smuggling routes to get their people across. At the same time, Pakistan, um, uh, there's a group there called Jundala, which is a Baluchi uh, terrorist group that's supported by the United States. Uh, depending on what day of the week it is and how much money is being paid off by the CIA, this Jundala will make uh, forays into Iran and commit terrorist attacks. Now, Pakistan sometimes cracks down on this group, and that's ISI, that's the Pakistani Intelligence Service, but uh, other times if, they, if they're paid off, uh, uh, they, they leave this group alone. So that's the only, uh, uh, but you can see the problem. If ISIL attack it goes into Iran from uh, the West and Jundala decides to go in from the East, uh, that, that's sort of a pincer action. Uh, and, and, and then with the MEK, 
active also on the uh, border. Um, obviously, uh, we could see this uh, situation spreading to Iran uh, in a very bad way. Uh, as far as uh, the bin Laden family was flown out of the United States, so there wasn't really the, you know, we were told there was this no-fly policy. There were, there were a, a lot of planes flying after 9-11 we weren't told about, one of which was the uh, 747 that took, uh, uh, took the bin Laden family and dropped them off in Paris and Geneva. Uh, and they flew in to, 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 from various locations around the country. Uh, yeah, we protected bin Laden's family, but we did very little to protect the uh, first responders who uh, have died and are very sick in, in New York and Washington, D.C. JJ, thanks for the call. Vac in Wisconsin, you're on the air with Wayne Madsen. Go ahead, Vac. Vac's gone. We've got Tom in New Jersey. You're on the air, Tom. Go ahead. Good day, Mr. Madison and Mr. Watson. Uh, my question, Mr. Madison, is the uh, Mr. Duncan in uh, Dallas, Texas. They're calling him Patient Zero, but uh, Patient Zero happened last year in December in uh, Guinea, I believe. Uh, it was a two-year-old boy. Um, the origin of Ebola, they're trying to say, is either, of course, infected uh, animal corpses or fruit bats. But they leave out the last shell, which could be, uh, of course, a two-year-old boy getting uh, vaccinations. Um, yeah, I, 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 I tell you, I, they, you know, when they, when they talk about the guy in, uh, who died, Mr. Duncan, in Texas as being patient zero, obviously there are, we, we know that, that there, are, <laughs> there are now maybe 5,000 people in West Africa who have died of this disease. And that may, I may be global in that number. We're not getting, and for Obama to send the military over to deal with a public health issue, I really question whether AFRICOM, which was designed to protect U.S. business interests, oil interests and other interests in Africa is, is, is well placed to deal with this uh, developing pandemic in, in West Africa. So uh, what one thing the military does do when they go into an area, they, they tend to keep um, a, 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 a dozy journalists out. They put a, an information, what's called an information cone over the area where uh, not, no independent news goes out. That's what I'm very skeptical and suspicious about with Obama's deployment of troops into West Africa. Okay, thanks for the call. Yeah, so picking up on that, Wayne, I mean, we've seen Chinese uh, economic expansion in Africa outstripping the U.S. So do you believe that this Ebola outbreak and other so-called crises like that are being used as pretexts to send U.S. troops into the region to establish strongholds that will later benefit economically the U.S. military industrial complex in that region? It could very well be. You know, we're already in there to fight these uh, groups that are active now in West Africa as a result of our the neocons foolhardy uh, uh, project to, uh, you know, get rid of Gaddafi in Libya. That just turned out all this this weaponry and these jihadists who are now active in Mali and Burkina Faso and Niger and with Boko Haram in Nigeria and Ansardin in northern Mali. Uh, and other and other countries. So the, 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 these American troops are supplementing troops that are already in in, in West Africa. Now you know the, the the one country that has provided top shelf uh, medical care to West Africa is Cuba, and we know because of this ridiculous uh, quarantine or boycott we've had against Cuba, they've developed this. Uh, a medical system that is far beyond anything we have in the United States that's affordable. And uh, they have dispatched their doctors to West Africa. And so Cuba dispatches top quality doctors and we send the military in. I mean, uh, you know, you, you, get, you just got to wonder uh, who's in charge of things in Washington, D.C. Um, and when, um, you know, and, and the people in West Africa know that when and th that they see these Cuban doctors are getting, the, they're going to start getting the best medical care available. And I don't care what Ileana Ross Letton and, and her gang of uh, Guzanos in South Florida have to say about it. Uh, those Cubans are needed in West Africa. And we should, we sh if anything, we should be using our military planes to fly more Cuban doctors over there. Switching topics now, Ukraine, I know this is something you've been focusing on in the past. We've seen a kind of quieting of, of tensions in recent weeks. We've had a ceasefire, Putin withdrawing troops from eastern Ukraine. Do you see that crisis as ebbing away or is it going to spark back into life here in the near future? 
Well, the, that crisis is now going from sort of the battlefield to the um, corporate boardrooms uh, uh, throughout Europe and, and also the Middle East because winter is now approaching. And uh, this idea of sanctions on Russia, which affects their ability to uh, ship their natural gas and other energy supplies to Western Europe is really starting to impact on on Western Europe. And we already seen uh, now uh, unemployment rise in Germany as a result of this uh, ill-conceived uh, uh, sanctions, these ill-conceived sanctions against Russia. The French farmers are now dumping their produce that they would normally sell to Russia uh, in town squares. And uh, all we get from Francois Hollande, the French uh, president, is... Uh, 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 more talk about uh, uh, e more EU sanctions. Look, that was a coup d'etat uh, in, in Kiev by a bunch of neo-Nazis and, 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 and um, um, fascists. Um, and uh, it was Victoria Nuland uh, at the State Department who, who pr promoted that. And now we have a West German, I mean, a German um, uh, a news report that um, uh, the, the, the Ukrainian army uh, they wear helmets uh, with swastikas and SS symbols on them. I mean, this is, uh, you know, no wonder Russia. Russia does, you, you do something like that, and Russia remembers what happened in World War II. You know, uh, 25 million Soviet citizens lost their lives as a result of the German Nazi attack on, on Russia. And to have Ukrainian troops uh, wearing Nazi helmets uh, going in to kill Russian-speaking people in eastern Ukraine, uh, I, I would have reacted as much as Putin did, and uh, he secured that Russian base in, in Crimea, where there's a majority Russian population. We, we would have done the same thing if one of our overseas military bases uh, were uh, put in jeopardy, uh, and um, uh, he took that base without firing a shot. Nobody died. Of course, if we did, you'd, we'd do shock and awe, and we'd kill a lot of civilians. So. Who's, who's the more civilized person here? Okay, uh, coming up after the break, your calls for Wayne Madsen, 1 800 259 Stay right there, InfoWars.com. This hour brought to you by InfidelBodyArmor.com. When it hits the fan, don't be left without the body armor that will save your life. With prices starting at just $374.99 and ships free. Get yours at InfidelBodyArmor.com. Just won't quit. Hi, Ted Anderson with Midas Resources. Is it time to convert paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver yet? Get our 10 Reasons book free. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. I'm watching and waiting for the right time to take everything you own. I love a dark house. Don't be the next victim of a break-in. Go to faketv.com and discover a device that creates the illusion someone is inside watching TV and makes your home unappealing to would-be thieves. Don't these people ever leave? Starting at $24.95 and there's free shipping. Go to faketv.com or ask for it at your local hardware store. Fake TV, the burglar deterrent. 
Silver has always been nature's very own antibiotic, and only one system allows you to generate an endless supply of natural silver solutions. SilverLungs.com. You'll find no wild claims or pseudoscience. Just a